How's it going Star Seekers? I hope you're all doing alright and welcome back to the channel for the first video in a new series I'm going to be trialling on the channel called 30 minutes to buy. Now you've no doubt noticed that the number of videos I've been publishing has dropped down in this past month and this is primarily due to my working patterns changing and me not having as much free time as I used to have. So in order for me to put out more content I'm going to give this new series a go where I basically play a game for around 30 minutes or so, summarise the mechanics of the game and my thoughts on its gameplay and then based on what I've experienced I'll reveal whether or not I would buy the game. Now it's important to understand that this is not a review of the game and these videos aren't going to be replacing my standard reviews but to me the first 30 minutes of a game should be the most impressionable and after reviewing about 250 games this past year I'm able to get a pretty good feel for a game within the first hour of playing it. So without further ado let's get this video underway and for this first venture we're going to be checking out a game called Cyberhive which is available on the UK Switch eShop for £7.39 and the US eShop for $9.99. Now Cyberhive is essentially a turn-based resource management game with a kind of choose your own adventure style storyline and it follows the journey of the Melistar, a spaceship populated by a race of intelligent anthropomorphic bees and your mission as the commander of the Melistar is to explore the galaxy in search of a set of artifacts which potentially hold the mystery of the universe. Now along the way you encounter several other alien races, all of which seem to be different species of insects and the choices that you make along the way impact on how the storyline progresses, with your decisions making and breaking alliances which can result in either fortunate or dire consequences for you and your crew. Now the game starts with a brief tutorial which does explain a few of the core gameplay mechanics but I found it to be a little lacking in its explanations and for the most part I just ended up learning how to play the game as I went along. Taking a look across the top of the screen you'll see we have a set of resources all which serve different purposes and I'll give you a quick rundown of the general usage of each of them and I'll explain how the game's turn based and resource management mechanics operate. So the first icon represents your crew of bees. You start the game with 5 bees with additional bees produced over time by your incubator and each turn these bees can be assigned to different rooms on your ship which enhance the different roles that these rooms perform. To give an example of this, assigning them to the honeycomb will increase the quantity of red crystals which are processed into yellow energy gel each turn and this is quite an important process as for every turn each of your bees consumes several units of energy gel and if you run out of it then it's game over and you've got to start over. Your bees can also be assigned to things like the laboratory where you can research different technologies each of which improves the efficiency of other rooms upgrading them in different ways but conducting this research costs spare parts, the blue coloured resource which is also used to upgrade rooms and repair your ship if it becomes damaged. Now in order to maintain a healthy supply of resources you're going to need to salvage them from asteroids, garbage piles and storage containers and your flight control cabin scans for new resources each turn with your chances of actually finding something improving with every bee that you assign to it. Once you do manage to locate a new salvageable object you then need to reassign your bees to collect the resources from it but each object contains a limited number of resources and disappears after only a few turns. I found that a lot of my game time was spent shifting bees back and forth between salvageable objects and the control room and while this is easily done by hitting the ZL and ZR buttons, doing this in the ship overview menu is kind of buggy and I often had to open up the menu for rooms and resource points in order to assign more than 3 bees at a time. Now the game is comprised of several chapters and in the first chapter titled The Black Sun you discover your first relic and encounter several of the game's key players. You meet things like the Gravedigger Cull, a beetle race aboard a ship called The Black Sun who also appear to be searching for the relics, a band of cockroach pirates who are causing trouble and a group of blood sucking mites who aren't too happy to meet your acquaintance and you usually have the option of being either hospitable or hostile towards these parties which as I've 
said before usually results in a different outcome. Me being a warmongering kind of guy decided to piss off as many of these factions as I could and I often opted for the most hostile choice possible which usually resulted in me engaging in some kind of battle with them. Now the battles themselves are fought in a kind of mini game styled after Missile Commander where you have to shoot down incoming missiles with your own and the number of bees that you've actually assigned to your barracks determines your supply of missiles for these skirmishes. Your performance in these battles determines the outcome of them and failing to destroy the enemy missiles will result in your ship taking damage and bees becoming injured and requiring medical attention. Injured bees are unable to be assigned to rooms and are instead sent to the medical bay to recover over several turns and damage to your ship is initially absorbed by your shield, a portion of which can be replenished each turn but taking more damage than your shields can absorb will result in rooms being destroyed and these require spurs parts in order to reinstate them. Now overall the initial impression left on me by Cyberhive was a positive one. Navigating the menus is pretty easy though it can be a little difficult to see whether or not you've targeted a resource point at times and the gameplay itself is simple but engaging requiring you to make tactical decisions in order to ensure you've got enough resources to continue and that you're focusing your crew's attention and efforts according to the situations that you encounter. Being a story driven game which is entirely text based you should expect the game to have plenty of dialogue to read through but from what I've seen the developers have put a good amount of effort into developing the game's plot and there seems to be a decent amount of depth to Cyberhive's lore which is always a positive thing in my opinion. I've always been a fan of choose your own adventure style games and Cyberhive presents you with plenty of decisions though I can't really comment on how big of an impact these will have in the long run or whether their impact is significant enough to warrant multiple playthroughs. Now so far as any problems went I've already mentioned the menu bug which has minimal impact on gameplay but something that does have a major impact are the game's crashes of which I had two in my 45 minutes of playtime and the game doesn't actually appear to save until you've completed a whole chapter so I had to start a new game each time it crashed. Now this alone leaves me in two minds as to whether or not I'd buy the game as it took me around 30 minutes to play through the first chapter and I could imagine being pretty pissed off if I got to the end of it, encountered a crash and then had to start the whole thing over again. Aside from the crashes though, Cyberhive is a decent choose your own adventure game and if you enjoy story driven games with an added layer of strategy then it might be worth checking out. And so that's about it for this first TMTB video, so please do let me know your thoughts and opinions on the video in the comments section below. Producing this took a lot less time than my standard reviews, but hopefully I was able to maintain a decent level of quality with it and I should be able to cover a wider range of titles with these videos and may even manage to take some viewer submissions in the near future. Go ahead and do me the honours of hitting that like button if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so and want to see more content like this. And until next time, take care of yourselves and game on.